You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. I'm Trevor Wade. I'll be your host today, the Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC. And I'm joined today by Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Ops. How are you doing, Alan? Very well, thank you. Yeah. So uh, how's everything been going here? I, I heard you got to hunt a little bit the past couple of nights. I with... did. I did. I kind of slacked a little bit here recently, but uh, Sunday morning I took loaded up Sparky, went down, and enjoyed the morning a little bit. Just a nice morning to be out running a dog and getting a little exercise myself. So. Yeah, this is a fun time of year because in the mornings and evenings, it's just about perfect. You know, you get a little warm during the day. But uh, the mornings and evenings are just perfect for hunting or fishing or whatever you enjoy doing out there. Yeah, you know, earlier in the year in February and March, you know, we hear our buddies in Alabama and southern states, you know, how, you know, talking about how nice and warm it is and this and that, you know. But uh, this time of the year up here is hard to beat. Yeah. Hard to beat. Yeah. Right now we're kind of in our quiet period. So it slows down my hunting a little bit just because I hunt mostly state land and stuff like that. But I did uh, actually went out and hunted behind my house last night and actually treated coon with the, with the Jolene dog that I Did have, you? so I was yeah. excited. We're still working she, on a few things. She she's coming along though. Huh? Yeah, she yeah. she barked good on track, and she obviously treed until I got there, and then she hushed. I don't know if before I got it, someone was maybe rough on her or what, but we're still working through some things. So uh, I, yeah. I like her. I like her, yeah. but uh, we're still figuring out the barking thing. Yeah, you still got the old black dog too, don't you? No, or you don't have. Well, him. he's in Tennessee. Oh, he he's is in Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The only ones I have up here are are that uh, year old female and then uh, the Hank dog guy. Just yeah. turned four years old this month, so yeah, time flies. Yeah, yeah. Four years. I got him right after I came here. Yeah, matter of fact, this this month is your four year anniversary at UKC that, too. That's right. And today's your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of a big month, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> everything. And what here is at today? Once. The twenty third, May twenty third. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks. I'm getting old. Yeah, twenty five, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna stay 25 for yeah. a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we're si we're sitting here taping on, like you said, on the 23rd. We just I just got back from uh, Blue Tick Days uh, down. It was at the Blackford County Fairgrounds. First time I had been there uh, at that facility in Hartford City, Indiana. Um, the Blackford County Coon Hunters hosted it there, and it was they had a pretty good weekend there. I think. Yeah, yeah. That's about a half hour northwest of where Autumn Oaks is there at Richmond, but yeah, not far from there. But yeah, nice area, good area. Yeah, obviously a, a Noah the club, Chad McCoy and Brad Heil. We actually used them as a satellite club for for a couple of years, um, and you know it's right it's right close to Portland, uh, the Bryant Club there. Limber yeah. lost. It's close to uh, the Delaware County Club. Uh, there's a few other surrounding clubs, and all the clubs worked really well together. And I could see that I could see more associations reaching out to this area and trying to get a major event there. Just because yeah. how many local coon hunters there are. Everywhere, and there's a lot of great hunting right in that area, and they can put a lot of dogs in the woods there within an hour from right there. Yeah. yeah All directions. Yeah, so Blue Tick Days at May 18th through 20th there, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the results. Um, the first one, King of Hunt. Uh, and, again, this is uh, one that I think it might be the second time he's won it. Uh, Grand Night Champion 4, Rock Creek Country Club. Blue Tick Mail owned by Terry Tappy and Matt Lingo of Indiana. Matt was handling him this weekend. Yeah, that dog's off of uh, old uh, Big Country. That's right. And uh, they have done a lot, a lot of winning with that dog. He's been in the top 16 at Autumn Oaks a time or two, but I think at least twice, maybe three times, actually. Yeah, consecutively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's been up there in the top 100 of the world hunt. No no surprise here. He's he's just been a consistent uh, dog for him. He's got a little age on him by now. Maybe not as old as we think just because of all the winning he's done, but he's probably, what, I don't know, four or five? Yeah, I'd four, say five, he, six, maybe even. He, he was winning so young. Yeah, he was, he was. winning so young and, and got small out on him early. But it, yeah, he'd probably surprise us how he probably you're right, yep. four, five, six years old. And maybe. Terry Tappy, Matt Lingo, they don't get better than those two guys right there. And uh, uh, both of them have always hunted a good dog. Yeah. And if you go look through the results, you can find them on uh, UKC Dogs website under the standings tab on the Coonhound page, or you can find them on the forums. Uh, you'll see a lot of the dogs that did good over the weekend were out of country club. Not only is he still doing good himself, but he's throwing a lot of good dogs. Yeah. Looks like. Yeah. Um, again, here, Queen of Hunt, Grand Knight Champion, Northern Creek Blue Queen, uh, Blue Tick Female, owned by Derek Bryan and Matt Lingo, Indiana, just right there close by again. Yeah, Derek is kind of uh, Matt's uh, 
partner there, a protege. He's just a young kid there, but uh, he's been hunting now for a good little while. Yep. Uh, just, like I said, just a young guy, but he's hunted queen for a while, and they've done a lot of winning with her too. Yeah, came from Larry Harvey. Yeah, uh, not Michigan. very far from here. And you know, Larry has always been known to have good blue ticks for yeah. a lot, a lot of years. Good solid downs, and uh, this is one of those. Yeah, and like you said, Derek, he's he judged for us at TOC. Uh, they say he works second shift, so he just gets off and hunts all night, and it's perfect time he's, of his life to hunt hard. He is, and he's ate up with it. Yeah, ate up with it. Uh, here, King of Show. This dog is kind of hot on the on the show circuit now. Seems like every event I go to, I take pictures of this dog. Uh, and this is Champion PR Hack Creek Papa Top Stylish Chrome Blue Tick, owned by Amy and Richie McDonald of Ohio. Yeah, Amy is. Uh, she's one that used to work at United Kennel Club a good while ago, but uh, uh, as, as she started with Black and Tans, actually, has won the World Show with a dog named Cowboy. Uh, is as well versed as anybody knowledgeable on breed standards and uh, confirmation and uh, always brings good dogs to the shows you know so yeah congratulations to amy and and richie uh queen of show was grand champion two lingo's bgk blue bombshell uh right now on record we show that bombshell is owned by mark and renee hauk um i'm almost positive sarah uh and her son drew lingo are now the owners of the dog they haven't transferred the paperwork over but sarah was handling the dog there at the event yeah yeah this dog i don't know anything about as far as the dog's lineage or anything like that but sarah is another one that has judged a lot of shows knows a good hound and knows a good dog and and congratulations to her bombshell queen of show so those were the big overall winners of the weekend but uh the blue tick uh, the BBOA, similar to other breed associations, they have year-long uh, series and, and standings and such where they do an invitational hunt that kind of culminates here at the the Blue Tick Days. And they call theirs the Invitational, uh, just as simple as that, the Blue Tick Invitational. And on the night hunt side, that's on Thursday night. Uh, it's kind of a non-licensed, invitation-only style hunt. I think they had three casts of dog this year. And they have a, a high-scoring male and a high-scoring female. Uh, so, and a Bart, uh, pre prefacing, uh, uh, interview to come up here shortly. Bart talks a, l- a little bit about that whenever I talk to him, explains it a little bit for anybody who yeah. may be interested in yeah. getting involved in this. Yeah, good. But the high scoring male of the invitational hunt was Grand Night Champion Horse Creek True Grit, uh, blue tick male owned by Casey and Brandon Kelly of South Carolina. Yeah, that's a dog that I, uh, you probably know more about the dog than I do, but, uh, yeah, Grand Night Champion out of, yeah, South Carolina. I know the dog, and the dog did and, really good this week. Yeah, and it's good to see some of those guys from the south, like here, or South Carolina or Southeast, coming up here to Indiana and doing well. Their dogs obviously uh, handled the different terrain. The terrain is quite a bit different here than it would be in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, congratulations to them. Invitational winners there. High-scoring male. Uh, on the uh, female side, invitational uh, night hunt, high-scoring female. That was night champion, Frosty Blue Miss Rambo. Uh, blue tick owned by Brian Lucas of Indiana. I believe Brian's son, uh, Connor, was handling that female this weekend. Yeah. Uh, they're from right there in Indiana, and uh, I, I know Connor's kind of the same way. He's he's a younger guy, and he's he's ate up with the hunt, and the results show that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, before you came along, I used to go to all the breed day hunts, you know, and did for a lot of years, got to know a lot of them. Actually, Blue Tick Days is one that Todd always wanted to go yeah. to. Todd Killam always shows Blue Tick Days to go to, so uh, – and, you know, there was plenty for me to go to, so I'll just let him. Uh, but I do know a lot of the blue tick guys. But I feel like uh, uh, in the last three, four years since you've been here, I've kind of missed out a little bit. I'm not quite as in touch with some, especially some of the younger guys here, yeah. like uh, like Brian Lucas, Connor Lucas, you mentioned, yeah. you know. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He may be one that uh, you become acquainted with as uh, time goes on and he keeps yeah. winning on the major yeah. level. Heck, yeah. Uh, and on the show side, they have the uh, invitational show. They had it on noon on Friday uh, for in- invitation only. They had a three uh, judge panel there to judge the dogs. And the male winner of that show was Grand Champion Three Rock and W Surround Sound, uh, owned by Whitney and Debbie Killo of Cabot, Arkansas. Yeah, I don't think Whitney was even there. Was she? She probably had somebody else Jacqueline handle it. Jacqueline Smith was handling the okay, dog. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that dog's won a lot, you know, a winter classic, and, and uh, the dog's not that old, but uh, I think it was in the top 10 in our top 10 show at Winter Classic this last year as well. But, yeah, just a well-rounded, nice hound, and I'm not surprised to see that dog in the winter circle here again. Right, and uh, just to say more about uh, Whitney and her breeding program here, the Invitational Bench Show female winner, Grand Champion 5, Rockin' W's Blue Cover Girl, 
owned by Angela and Jackson Cable there yeah. in Indiana. So Jackson is uh, Angela's boy, her and Kevin's boy, just a young, what is just he, six, six or old. seven, six years yeah. old. He used to come to all the shows and had this little slinky dog. <laughs> He'd always show his little slinky or whatever, but it looks like he's, uh, I know he's showing some of these, yep. uh, some of these dogs now, so I don't know if he showed this dog or not, but, uh, yeah. He was in school. I think it's Friday was his last day of school, so he oh, didn't get there till later in the day, yeah. but, uh, she said that he's been showing him, showing her some at yeah. the, at the at the youth events around, he he did get a little, she was telling me a story about, she, he, he got frustrated with her at a local uh, Yep event show a couple of weeks ago, and he's been pretty, pretty tore up about it ever since. So <laughs> she's got to, she's got to make it up to him, sounds like. So Well, I can, I can about rest assured if uh, it looks like he takes a lot of interest in the dogs, like his mom and his dad or whatever, but little Jackson grows up, he's 15, 16 years old. He's going to be, he's probably going to be uh He's going to be a good one, I'd say. Oh, yeah. He'll be he, a little hound guy. He doesn't have uh, any other choice, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, while I was there, I've, I've we've made it a point to give us, so our associations and, and uh, a platform here on our podcast to talk about uh, what they have going on and what's upcoming and, and just uh, reach out to people who may not know of them otherwise. And there this weekend I had a chance to talk to the vice president of the Blue Tick Breeders of America uh, Bart Nelson and uh, got a chance to have a little uh, 15, 20 minute interview with him. And, and he goes through some interesting stuff. So, uh, so I, the interview is about to play here. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm here at the Blackford County uh, fairgrounds here. We're here uh, late Saturday night waiting on the cast to roll in from the hunt. And I'm joined by the vice president of the BBOA, Bart Nelson. How you doing, Bart? I'm doing good, Trevor. And you? Good, good. Tired yet? Uh, yeah, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you're serving as hunt director tonight and we're sitting here, I know you're sitting here waiting on cats to roll in. I just came back and going to, uh, get all the results posted and stuff tonight as they roll in and get pictures of all the winners. But what do you think about the week so far? Uh, it's been a busy week. Uh, it's been a good week. Uh, nice, uh, facility that we've got here in Hartford city. So it, it's been a fun week. Well, hey, before we talk about any of that, let's let's talk about what BBOA is first off. Uh, obviously, it's it's our charter Blue Tick Association, Blue Tick Breeders of America. Um, just tell us a little bit about BO, BBOA and uh, and how you got involved in it. Uh, the BBOA, uh, like you said, is a Blue Tick organization. Um, I got involved in it in probably about ten years ago when I joined, and then uh, become friends with Darren Batterson. Robbie Brooks, and uh, when Robbie decided to step down as vice president, he asked me if I would take over, and I got elected in, so that's kind of how I got in this position. Yeah, it seems, seems like that was probably uh, a couple years ago in Milton, Indiana, two years ago, whenever you, you first got elected vice president, and I know this, this year in the meeting, you, you got re up, so you're, you're on the hook for another couple years, right? Yep, um, I took over actually in 21. And, uh, yeah, I just, just got reelected again. So I'm here for another two years. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so people interested out there, you know, we, we want to use this platform to help our, our breed associations, state associations in different capacities, just spreading the word. Maybe there's a blue tick, uh, fancier out there who's not familiar with the BBOA and, uh, and doesn't know what that membership entails. If somebody was interested in finding out more about, uh, BBOA and how to enter and, and what you guys do for the hunters and, and show folks in the breed, how would they find out about it? You guys you got Facebook page, you got a website. Yes, we have a, a Facebook page. It's called uh, the BBOA Facebook page. We have a, a website, Blue Tick Breeders of America, that we keep updated with all your current win, win pictures. Um, we're set up by zones. So we have six different zones um, throughout the United States. And... For instance, Zone 4 consists of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Canada. And on the website, there's uh, zone pages you can go to and look at all the wins from all across the United States. Any zone sectional or zone hunt, it's posted. Yeah. One interesting thing I, I think you guys do uh, that I don't think any, uh, I'm trying to think off top if any of the other breed associations do it, but you, you mentioned the zones and you, each zone has their own representatives. Um, you have like a, a president of zone four and, and it tends to be that some member of leadership is at all the BBOA 
sectionals within that zone and you guys have a zone championship and that that's a real that's a good way for new folks to go out and acquaint themselves with the bboa on that level uh i think that's a, a pretty good way to do it when you have a member of leadership that's just so readily available who can give them a lot of information on joining and what the bboa can do for them when they can just go to a sectional at a local event and find out about it yeah the zones are set up with a chairman a vice chairman secretary treasurer and then you have three board of directors for every zone yeah and and so with your membership obviously uh you got all, uh, one of the perks of any of the breed associations is getting the the yearbook and you guys got a, pr- a pretty good yearbook uh pretty thick in size well made lots of ads in there and that good stuff so that comes with the membership that's uh, always a top priority i think for everybody joining a, a breed association um all right, so let's talk about uh, Blue Tick Days this year. Uh, so far, you guys you guys started something last year that that's caught on a little bit, and that's having warm up events through the week. So, so this week you guys got started on Monday already. You had a pretty good week at some of your warm up events. Yes, um, here in Blackford County, um, they hosted the first one on Monday night, and they did not have a bench show, but they uh, put twenty three dogs in the woods Monday night. Tuesday night we were in Salma. Uh, Delaware County, uh, they did have a show. They had two in the show and 19 in the hunt. And then Lumber lost uh, Coon Hunters Club up in Bryant. They uh, had nine in their show, and they put 30 in the woods on Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, of course, we moved into our RQE. Yeah, yeah. so 72 dogs over three nights, Monday through Wednesday is, is pretty dang good. It speaks a lot for this area and, and some of the blue tick guys coming out a little bit early to get – get their dogs warmed up and that's a good way to do it you know a lot of times people want to come out early stretch their legs and stretch their dog's legs and that way in the license event they're able to to go out and do so without having to get a a, and in this instance an indiana uh, hunting license and they can do it legally and and knock out a couple birds with one stone so that's a good idea by you guys uh, to do that and i see i see more folks doing that in the future probably but uh yeah, so so let's talk about maybe some some things that BBOA has go BBOA has going on, and uh, and maybe some new things. I know you guys just had your your meeting today. Is there anything uh, anything right now that BBOA is working on that uh, you want to you want to disclose any new programs or you know sectional stuff or talk about your invitational a little bit or anything like that? Um, there's nothing really uh, new. No new programs coming up as far as the sectionals go. Um, each zone has their sectional, their BBOA sectional hunts. Um, most of the zones also have their own Facebook page. So all the zone events are posted. We try to post them on BBOA's main Facebook page. Um, they're also also trying to get them posted on the website. Um, I will disclose that Blue Tick Days 2024 will be in Hartford City, Indiana again. Coming right back here. We're coming right back. And uh, I guess I, the way it is, it's always the weekend after Mother's Day. And that next next year, that falls pretty uh, similar to this year. 16th, 17th, and 18th of next year. Yeah. We try to give the host club um, the opportunity to hold it two years um, if we've had a good turnout. And uh, Chad McCoyne here, he's done a great job. We've had no issues with guides. So... We gave him the option to have it again next year, and he took on it, so we'll be back. Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, Chad, this is Blackford County's first time hosting a major event uh, by themselves here. You know, they hit Chad and Brad Heil and all those guys did a good job. And, of course, uh, they and, and Chad would want us to mention some of the other local clubs, like the Selma Club that you mentioned, uh, Bryant and Matt Lingo's club, and, and those guys stepping up and – this whole area has kind of uh, been real helpful in putting this event on. And I think Chad mentioned that uh, the fairgrounds here, they're being revamped a little bit. There's a really nice building here that they just laid down some new uh, concrete in and they're revamping another building around here. And and actually, and some camper hooks up sounds like. Yeah, it it looks like uh, I knew this year was a little touchy with the camper hookup uh, ordeal, but next year they're like you said, they're, they're redoing this fairgrounds. Next year, they're supposed to have uh, electric and water hookups for campers. That'll be so nice. everybody will be able to camp right here on the grounds. Um, it's going to be interesting. We're going to work on revamping a few of our events, changing some times, and maybe redoing something um, just to make it a better turnout. 
which it was a good turnout. We've put quite a few dogs in the woods this this weekend and this week. So I'm looking forward to next year already. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, we talked about the weeknight uh, warm-up hunts into Thursday. You mentioned a little bit you went into your uh, all-blue tick qualifier um, where you had a, an RQE bench show and night hunt that was exclusive to blue ticks. And then also you had your invitational night hunt. Do you want to talk about the invitational at all and kind of maybe get that information out to folks who may not be uh, aware of how that works? Uh, the invitational hunt is based on high-scoring blue tick from different hunts, uh, say Winter Classic, Grand America, Autumn Oaks, the World, uh, the World Hunt, uh, Tournament of Champions, um, here at uh, Blue Tick Days. Uh, so we invite, I think it's 24 dogs off the top of my head for the Invitational Hunt. And the way we do it is we invite the top male and the top female from hunt and show. Yeah. So we try to get a lot of participation involved in this and then we give a decent prize to the winner um but we're working on redoing a few things with the invitational hunt to try to get it i guess to me it's try to make it mean more to the hunters yeah you know we don't charge an entry fee for it this year we did not because we looked at it like you know these these hunters spend a lot of money even the show people they spend a lot of money traveling going to these events so we just decided we would let them enter it for nothing yeah yeah and i heard uh during the meeting you guys were bouncing around some ideas on maybe how to revamp what that looks like next year so uh if you're interested in that or a lot of people probably qualified for that this year be sure to stay tuned to the facebook page that's probably where a lot of the new information goes out right yeah, yeah. Uh, the the new Facebook page is uh, is where most of our information will be posted. Yeah. And then uh, going into that, obviously, um, I don't know what the deal was. The, sh the show numbers were a little bit down, but the hunt numbers were really strong. On Friday, of course, you had some weather roll in, and it rained pretty good. I think everybody was uh, soaked to the bone, but you still put 85 dogs in the woods, so you can't beat that. Yeah, for the weekend, well, for the week, including the warm-up hunts, uh, we put 274 dogs in the woods and 52 in the shows. And that includes the Invitational also. Yeah, today's show was really strong. Sat uh, Saturday's show was really strong. And you guys also had a, a confirmation show early this morning uh, where they, they had them in the other building over there and uh, uh, did the, the whole confirmation show thing, which is, uh became a little more popular over the breed day stuff this year. But, uh, yeah, so perfect. You said 2024, Hartford City, Indiana, National Blue Tick Days, May 16th through 18th. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the winners. Uh, Alan and I probably will whenever we bring this episode in before we do this. But is there anything else you want to say on behalf of BBOA? Uh, just on behalf of BBOA, I would like to thank everybody that participated this weekend. And, uh, you know, Blue Tick Days is normally a very good, strong event. Um, we normally have a very good turnout. And Next year, I would like to see more people uh, attend it and uh, participate in it. Yeah, more members, more people come out to the, the Breed Day event, you know, associations, and, and all hunters need to stick together, get out there, uh, get become a member of the association, get involved, and, uh, and, and help out the people that are helping you. Yeah, and, and one thing I would like to add uh, is if you have a club that would like to host the, the Blue Tick Days, you know, shoot us an email. Uh, let us know. I will get with you. And uh, the email address is bboa1946 at icloud.com. I'll get with you. Uh, I'll answer you. And uh, we can uh, email back and forth and see if we can work up something to move it around a little bit. Absolutely. Well, Bart, I feel like we're about to have a few casts start rolling in here. So the, the long night's about to start. But I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your 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 night here to talk to me and uh, and. Uh, Appreciate having you on. Thanks, Bart. Well, thanks, Trevor, and I appreciate you and everything that uh, you and uh, Alan and UKC have done for us, and uh, we'll see you in Autumn Oaks. Yeah, so I appreciate Bart sitting down with me there uh, at Hartford City. I know it was it was late, and there was a lot going on. He was actually the hunt director at the time, and he, as he stepped out and talked to me for just a little bit, but... Uh, I actually had a chance to conduct another interview, you know, 
take the podcast equipment and we're always trying to look for people who can give us different angles and things. And yeah, it's nice to be able to take the equipment with yeah. us to these breed day hunts and, and talk to folks like Bart and, uh, and Tyler Batterson is another one you interviewed, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what? We, I was talking to him a little bit there at the table and we were talking about, uh, his area of the country, they, they all, the clubs in that area work so well together. South, and, Southeast Iowa is where he's right. at, Troy, Iowa. Yeah. Right. And they, they all put on a YEP event. They all do. And they all coincide with each other. There's not going to be anything else going on within over a hundred miles of that area when there's a youth event going on and they just work well together. And we started talking about that little series that they have a little bit. And, uh, and yeah, I was, I figured, hey, let's get on there and talk about it a little yeah. bit. Not only that, but he's part of the uh, Mid American Coon Hunters Club down there in Troy, Iowa, and they host a lot of major events for us. Yeah, and have for a lot of years. Uh, Tim or Tim Gilchrist has been. He, he's one of our field reps. He belongs to that club. Uh, Darren Batterson, Tyler's dad, you know, involved with that club as well. I remember my last blue tick days was actually there. They hosted it. Wasn't right there at their club, but in that area. Yeah. And uh, Tyler was at that time early, early twenties, I'd say. Yeah. But he and a couple of those, a uh, couple of his other buddies that were in that age group, I remember really took notice. They they spearheaded so much of what the activities that were going on there, the water races and and field trials and things like that. And I already thought then they did such a great job then. I thought, man, the, these you know these young guys like they're they're a good role model for other young guys stepping up to the plate and, uh, you know, helping with events like this and they do a great job, you know? So that was five, six years ago, I guess now. And, and I guess Tyler recently got married and not too long ago, he's newly married and I guess had a, had a kid too. Yeah. Just recently. So, yeah. Yeah. But just a good guy too. Yeah. And he's a, he's a good example. And just that area, he's a good example of some younger guy, you know, in your mid, mid twenties that can become active and make a difference in your area with different with new ideas and yeah. stepping up to the plate and putting yeah. in the work. Yeah. Um, and he's a good example, and I I hope that you guys get something from this interview. If nothing else, maybe uh, plant a seed on on different ways to advance the youth in your area. And uh, and also something we talked about was uh, what it takes to put on a major event. We got a lot of calls about clubs interested in hosting major events. Well, he's about to tell you, you know, some of the things that you can do to work towards achieving that goal and and what it takes to do so. So I hope you enjoy this interview here with Tyler Batterson. Hey, y'all. This is Trevor. I'm sitting here at uh, National Blue Tick Days on Friday afternoon with Tyler Batterson. Hey, Tyler, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good, good. Now, where are you I know you're from somewhere down there in southern uh, Iowa. Where are you from exactly? Agency, Iowa. It's about five miles east of Ottumwa. Yeah, and a big blue ticker. That's right. Well, always... Always, never owned anything else. Always have been. So your dad has always been a he's been an officer here for the BBOA for in years past. Yeah, he's been a president and on the local zone, yeah, uh, board and yeah. And you guess you've been coming to this event for your whole life, or <sighs> far back as I can remember. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the, one of the most memorable ones for you had to be uh, uh, a couple of years ago in in Milton, right? Yep. A couple. Of, yeah, that's twenty one. Twenty twenty one. You won. You won King of Hunt with Swamper. I was 25 or 50 points shy of King of the Hunt with Swamper. Oh, that's right. You doubled up with him. That's right. Doubled okay. up, yep. Yeah, So and Swamper. So he comes – you guys have had your kind of your own line, and you've had a lot of success with that line, right? Yeah. Uh, I'd say we just started this line when I got into into the youth hunts and started coon hunting probably when I was 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that range, and started with a female called Abby that we bought off Brian Weber in Kansas, and – Everything's trickled on down since, and we're still running the same bloodline. Yeah. You know, I've been working for UKC for a little over four years now, and uh, it seems like your dogs are always doing well. You know, I see uh, zones and regional results for TOC and the World Championship, and you guys are always getting cast wins there and getting good scores. And at these major events, at Blue Tick Days, always a contender. Um, but, hey, what well, we were just talking out here at the UKC table a little bit, and, and what we were talking about – uh, you're a big you're a big part of the Mid American Coon Hunters Club there in Southern Iowa, Troy, Iowa, right? Yep, I'm uh, the president of the Mid American Coon Hunters Association in Troy, Iowa. Yeah, how long have you been in, in that? Since mid 2018, I took over, and before that, I was the UKC hunt director. I was in charge of setting up the times and the dates and the deadlines for the UKC hunts two or three years prior to that. Yeah. So you've been doing that for a while. Yeah, yeah. So. And one of the things we were talking about is is your guys' youth program. Obviously, we, we talk a lot about the youth programs on this podcast, and, and for good reason. It's the future of our sport. Uh, we need to be invested in our youth and keep them interested in the sport. Uh, you guys there in, in Southern Iowa, not just the Mid-American Coon Club, but a lot of the local clubs there have the little youth series 
And I thought it might be interesting for you to tell us a little bit about that and just maybe shout out some of the people involved and, and how it works and just tell us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, it was about four or five years ago. We started a youth series with the local clubs. See where I live, I have five clubs within 45 minutes of my house. And even the older members were really good about supporting each other's clubs at the local hunts, uh, using the same guides and same judges over and over again at all five clubs. We've all known each other for years. We all know each other's dogs and history. And so I got them involved and everybody on board and we kind of threw together our youth series. We call it the Southeast Iowa Youth, uh, youth Showdown. And uh, basically what we do is we have, it's a YEP event. All five clubs host a YEP event, class, bench show. Uh, Troy has the grounds to host a field trial and water race, but we don't keep track of the points for that. But basically our kids get one point for entering and one point for winning the bench show and hunt. Yeah. Either or. So, and we keep track of those points throughout all five series and we have an overall winner and you know, we bundle up our money. We, uh, we've been pretty good in the past about hosting some bigger hunts like the TOC zones yeah. and, uh, the world regions. And we've been pretty good about doing 50, 50 raffles and making our money up to cover those prizes in the 50 fifties. Uh, but whatever we come up short, we, we can make up. And, uh, so the kids hunt through all five series or whatever they can make. And we keep track of the points. And our money's pooled in together to buy them. Uh, we've been doing lights and a big plaque or trophy yeah. every year. So, and even we've even had some benches made up for the bench show winner, some real nice benches. Yeah. So you guys award one youth in the hunt and one in the show. Is that how, you, how it works? Uh, two. Could we do a junior and a senior? Okay. Very nice. So, so they just accrue points to the five events. Uh, you get a point for entering, a point for any win you get. Yep. So it's just as simple as that. Uh, the one thing that I think makes it work, and, and I say it makes it work, when you look at the, the numbers for the clubs in, in your area, not just the youth events, which have great turnouts. And we talked to you guys. No, it's not uncommon for you guys to hunt 20 dogs and have 20, 30 show entries at some of those youth events. But uh, I think the thing that makes it work is just talking to you and some of the, the other guys with local clubs. You guys are always changing out dates and, and working together and not working against each other. And making sure that uh, you know there's nothing competing with this youth event that you're putting on, so it's the only it's the only show in town on that weekend. Yep, we're pretty good about hey, you know, we got this going on this weekend. Can we swap you dates or whatever? And everybody's on board, you know, to make everything work. Like I said, you know, we might have five separate clubs, but we're basically one hole down yeah. there in Southeast Iowa. So. Get, get, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but bro, right offhand, do you remember what the five clubs are or where they're at? Yep. Uh, Four Rivers Coon Hunters Association in Sigourney, Iowa, Mid-American and Troy, Iowa, South Central I Iowa Coon Hunters in Blakesburg, and Red Rock Coon Hunters Association in Bussey, and Cedar Creek Coon Hunters in Highland Center. That's impressive. Right offhand to know that. <laughs> I, I was afraid I would have uh, stumped you or put you on the spot on that one. But yeah, so, and, and you talked about that area and you guys all working together on this, on not only this youth event, but you guys put on a ton of major events, especially over the past five years. My goodness, you guys have hosted breed day events. Yep. Uh, you've hosted TOC regions for us. You've hosted world zones. The world finals in 2019 were just up the road, you know, just an hour and a half away. Yep. What's it? I, it we get a lot of calls from from clubs interested in hosting major events, and that's not easy for for a club or area to host a major event when you're putting a hundred or 150 dogs in the woods. What's it What's it take for an area to put on a major event like that? In your opinion, uh, in my opinion, the first thing you got to have is a good location, a good grounds, you know, somewhere with lots of parking, lots of shade, a good facility with air, heat, shelter, whatever you need. Uh, hotels close by is a plus. And then probably the next most important, if not the most important, is guides. Yeah. You've got to have lots of guides. And I know in 2018 when that we had- That you can count on. Yes, that you can count on. In yeah. 2018 when we had blue tick days, we had over 50 guides called up and ready to go. And I know when casts were drawn out, we had a handful of them standing around that, that weren't needed. Yeah. You know, they, could, they still hunted. We had a few still hunt. We had a few show up that we forgot to call like, oh, you know, hey, sorry. You know, but they were all right with it. You know, we really appreciate the help and the support we get from the local clubs and guides. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's important. And, and like you said, having, having five clubs there in the area and working together and not against each other, you know, I hate to say it oftentimes you, you hear about com clubs competing too much in areas and putting 
dates and competing registries on the same weekend or put in a, a club hunt or something on the weekend of maybe your qualifier or a youth event or something, something something to compete against and working together and having all the clubs uh, bought in. Because it, whenever you're taking on a major event like that, it's not just going to be one club hosting it. Yeah, that's going to be the host club in the central location, but it's going to take all the, the clubs in the surrounding area working together to put on a successful event. That's correct. Yeah, we couldn't host any of those events if it wasn't for the other four clubs. And then there's even a club down in Memphis, Missouri, and Kirksville, Missouri that are also remotely close. And West Point, Iowa, remotely close. And they've all been pretty good about throwing some help our way and guides when, when we need them. Yeah. Hey, well, I, I wanted to get you on here and talk to you about five or ten minutes. And a big thing I want to talk about was the youth stuff. I'm glad we talked about that because – um, obviously, I get calls from from state associations, from from local coon clubs, from breed associations, different ideas for the youth, and you guys kind of have that figured out down there in southeast southeastern Iowa. So, I appreciate you sharing some of that stuff about your youth series with them. And uh, hey, I want to thank you, you and your club, and all your surrounding clubs for helping us out over the past I don't know ten years, however long, you, if, however long you guys have been around, you've been hosting major events, whether it's breed day events or uh, obviously TOC regions or uh, world zones and all that stuff so we appreciate you guys down there in iowa and i appreciate you sitting down with me yep appreciate it thanks trevor alan we both had Dalter pathfinder twos now for a little while what do you think about yours i'm liking mine one of the things i had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where i did not have service and i've used it there and it has worked flawlessly i love it yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. All right, I appreciate Tyler taking some time to sit down with me there on a busy weekend. But uh, the next thing we're going to do here is we're uh, going to finally finish our list of uh, Hall of Fame titled dogs. We started this a, a few weeks back. I know back on episode 44 already, we talked about uh, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, uh, Black and Tans and Leopards. And then on episode 51, we talked about uh, the Grand Champion Hall of Fame Blue Ticks. And then just recently on episode 53, we talked about English Plots and Red Bones. Uh, so today we're going to go through the tree and walkers. And also we're going to highlight the three dogs that have made uh, one that's made Grand Field Champion Hall of Fame and two that may, have made Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame. So We'll be done with that whole list that was compiled and uh, uploaded back on February 28th. And uh, now, like we said, we're just going to go through them kind of as they achieve it and, and give everybody their just due as it happens. And combining all the breeds then. So oh, I'm sure there's going to be a couple couple since uh, February. So, there's yeah. definitely been yeah. a few that I've seen on social media. So I'm going to yeah. update that list just uh, probably maybe later today and um, get it up on the on the website. And uh, we'll start working towards that list. Yeah, but, well, uh, sounds good. Let's get with it. So, yeah. Tree and Walker Coonhounds today, 19 of them total. So this is our largest breed. Uh, Blue Ticks had 18, so nipping right on their heels, making a little bit of a competition yeah. there. But uh, so yeah, 19, 11 males and 8 females. And the first one here, uh, the first Tree and Walker to achieve the Grand Champion Hall of Fame title would have happened before uh, it was even such a thing. Uh, Grand Field Champion, Confirmation Champion, Grand Water Champion, Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Preacher John the Rock. The male Born in uh, September of 2009, owned by Michael and Myra Seats of Stonefort, Illinois. Yeah, this dog was sired by world show champion, grand champion, confirmation champion, Red, Red Eagle coming to your city, and the dam is grand champion, PR Diamond Ridge, all-American girl bred by Vera Bergbauer, has 100 grand champion wins total, and the degree was earned in April of 2013. Now, this is a dog that I'm very familiar with. Uh, won the Prina series back in the day at least once or twice, maybe. Just a nice, nice hound. And you can tell he did a whole lot more than just a uh, show. Yeah. Mike had him in the hunts, uh, put him in the water races. He's a grand in there, uh, field trials, conf in the confirmation ring. Uh, he just did everything with his dog and a very well rounded dog and a good looking sucker, too. Yeah. He was one that was actually born before our cutoff, and, but was still active in the shows. Right. So we went back and grabbed him. And uh, Myra was showing this dog. This dog was 11 years old, 12 years old, and was still winning local shows. If that yeah. talks about the quality and the build of the dog. Yep. Uh, next one here, confirmation champion, grand champion, Hall of Fame, Midnight Troubles, back in town. A female born in February of 2009, owned by Melinda Hicks of Camden, West Virginia. Comes from the same area as John did uh, and showed in a lot of the same shows, uh, Trouble. 
Um, yeah, owned uh, by Melinda Hicks there out of Grand Knight Champion Southern Fork or South Fork River Mundars Largo and out of Confirmation Champion Grand Champion Night Owl Little Lady Rose, bred by Shane and Kimberly Ireland. 43 Grand Champion wins total, uh, degree earned in July of 2015. Now, uh, when we mentioned the number of Grand wins, it takes 37 Grand wins to earn this title of hall of fame but yeah 43 on record for this dog but this dog was uh won a whole lot back in the day uh was reserve world champion one year uh in uh, wooster ohio i believe it was uh, old dale prunny was a judge that year i remember and uh and but just uh, did a lot of winning back in the day nice nice female hey one thing i do want to mention you said 37 wins that'd be in our night hunts uh in the water race field trial and bench show it actually takes 40 oh does it okay that's right okay yeah. So I stand correct. Those are all yeah. uniform together. Yep. So, uh, the next one here: Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Confirmation Champion Heartthrobs Holy Terror, a male born in October of 2011, owned by Justin Casting of Seymour, Missouri. Yeah, this dog is sired by Grand Champion South Fork River Raisin Cane, and the, the dam is Grand Champion South Fork River Backwoods Barbie. Uh, both of those dogs, Cane and Barbie, uh, nice, nice, nice dogs in their own right. Backwoods Barbie's a dog that used to be owned by uh, Danielle Champ, used to show that dog and won a lot with her. Uh, but uh, uh, this dog had 42 grand champion wins, earned the degree in July of 2016. Perfect. Uh, next one here is Grand Field Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Second Wins, Deepwood Dolly. Uh, it's a female born in July of 2007, uh, owned by Amelia Wooten and Sabrina Smith of Brighton, Tennessee. Yeah, again, sired by a uh, well-known uh, Walker male bolt action Mundar. He was a national grand champion, grand champion, so that means he was the winner, overall winner at Autumn Oaks. Uh, and the dam is grand champion Shawnee's Little Dolly, bred by Stacy Criswell of Florida. 47 grand champion wins on this dog, earned the degree in September of 2016. Deep with Dolly. Moving on down our list here, we got Grand Champion Hall of Fame, WBC Dropping Down on Your Town Hank. It's a male born in October of 2013, owned by Stephanie, Robert, and Abigail Wire of Fairmont, West Virginia. Yeah, I remember this name just from announcing some shows back in the day, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. kind of <laughs> WBC Dropping Down on Your Town. Uh, uh, mouthful, it, isn't it? It is a mouthful, but uh, the dog is sired by Grand Champion 2 Stack em Up High. The dam is grand champion Cross B. Creed, stylish Carolina, bred by Lyndon Crosby. Dog has 45 grand champion wins total, earned the degree in April of two, or, uh, 2018. I like to see those little wire girls, Abigail and Ambriana. They uh, always competing at our, our youth events, at youth nationals and such. So Yeah, and those kids are growing up too. They are. They grow up so fast. No, it just, wasn't too long ago. They were just little little you know and and now you see pictures of them they're they're growing up fast for sure absolutely uh next one here grand champion hall of fame city's sassy southern girl the female born in october of 2013 owned by angela carpenter out of silva north carolina yeah any dog with the city and its name is oftentimes uh is uh, related to red eagle coming to your city he was a world show champion a grand champion confirmation champion uh, the dam is Grand Champion Stylish Star, bred by Charles Tyndall Jr. This dog has 60 Grand Champion wins total, uh, earned the degree in August of 2018. Next one here is one that we've talked about before, making actually our first Grand Knight Champion Hall of Fame dog ever. Uh, and, and the dog has since uh, added a Grand Champion Hall of Fame to its title, so a, a dual uh, Hall of Fame dog. So uh, congratulations to this fella. This is, uh, the dog is Hardy's Fabus River KDHTX. A female born in May of 2011, and Martin Hardy Jr. and Martin Hardy Sr. out of Herculaneum, Missouri, are the owners on this dog. Yeah, this dog is sired by Grand Knight Champion Mr. Ragin' Cajun, and the dam is Knight Champion Missouri's Hustlin' Jane, bred by Kerry Kruger. 122 Grand Champion wins total for this dog, earned the degree in August of 2019. 122 wins in Missouri. They have these federation points. That's a pretty popular thing. And has been for a lot of years. And obviously he ran that, um, you know, put the dog in, in a lot of shows over the years and, and a nice dog and won a lot of shows. And that's how he accumulated all these wins here yeah. on Katie. But uh, uh, she's obviously a nice dog. Uh, uh, Grand Knight Champion Hall of Fame, Grand Champion Hall of Fame two-time, or a, a double Hall of Fame dog. And, oh. and Martin Hardy is certainly proud of her as he should be. Yeah. 
and he's still competing. He's probably he going to add to that total. And uh, I think whenever at the end of the year we know we have to do missing report lists and get everything in to tie up our series and programs and such. Not yeah. to worry about Missouri because yeah. Martin usually calls in and gets everybody in Missouri he, straightened up. <laughs> make sure those reports are in in a timely manner. He does, but man, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. So congratulations to Martin, junior Absolutely. and senior, both there. Nice, 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 nice accomplishment for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Uh, next one here, we have Grand Champion Hall of Fame Uptown Girl, a female born in August of 2016, owned by Kevin Minton of Thayer, Missouri. Yeah, that's a name we've uh, seen a lot over the years. Yeah. Uptown Girl, a uh, nice female there. Out of uh, second wins, impressive Playboy is the sire, and the dam is second wins full throttle. Uh, that This dog was bred by Janice Hunter of Florida and has 58 grand champion wins, earned the degree in May of 2020. Uptown Girl. Kind of interesting that neither Playboy nor full throttle have uh, show titles, but both have been such reproducers. If you were to look at the dog, some of the dog's, Quality of dogs that come out of the cross between these two. Yeah. Really high quality yep. dogs. Yep, for sure. Uh, next one, confirmation champion, grand champion Hall of Fame, Tree Blazing Sea Rock City. Uh, it's a male born in October of 2011, owned by Katie and Jonathan Millwood of Baldwin, Georgia. Yeah, there's that uh, city name within the name there. And again, out of the world show champion, grand champion, confirmation champion, Red Eagle coming to your city. And the dam is grand champion PR Slacks, treat talking Missy, Bred by Lisa Hunsicker, who is the owner of, of uh, Red Eagle coming to your city. 40 grand champion wins here. Earned the degree in September of 2020. Are we already on this list for, for coming to your city? Confirmation champion, grand champion Hall of Fame, Ringer Threes, Made of Millions. This is a female walker uh, born in August of 2015, owned by Tanner and Ryan McMurray of Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Yeah, it seems like this is a dog that maybe won one of the categories at Autumn Oaks here in the last couple of years or a couple of years ago for Ryan McMurray there. But uh, the dog is sired by Grand Champion Champs History in the Making and Grand Champion PR Ringer 3's Million Dollar Baby. And maybe it's the Million Dollar Baby that I'm talking about that won at Autumn Oaks. I'm not sure one or the other there. But bred by Ryan McMurray, 40 Grand Champion wins, earned the degree in December of 2020. Next one on our list here is another kind of dual-purpose hound. Looks like Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Grand Knight Champion 3, Thunder and Thor. It's a male walker born in April of 2013, and Jason Smith out of friendly West Virginia owns this hound. This dog is sired by Dual Grand, Hollywood's Insane Scar, and the dam is Champion Grand Knight Champion, Beller Cindy. Uh, the uh, breeder on record is Lee Rhodes. He's out of Virginia. Uh, 41 Grand Champion wins total. Uh, earned the degree in March of 2021, Thunder and Thor. Moving on down our list here, we got uh, Emerald Grand Champion. That's a confirmation there, title. Is, yeah, it is. Yeah, look you at me go. It. You got it. Uh, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Stack em Up, He's How Pros Play. It's a male walker born in November of 2013, owned by Tiffany Schmersel of New Straitsville, Ohio. Yeah, this dog is sired by Grand Champion Bolt Action Rowdy, and the dam is Champion uh, Confirmation Grand Champion, uh, CHK Stack 'em Up How Pros Play. This dog was uh, bred by Trisha Snediger and Bridget Clary, has 42 Grand Champion wins total on his record, earned the degree in June of 2021 for uh, He's How Pros Play. I think the dog has a has a call name that's different. To call him Dak. Is this Dak here? Um, I think this one's Sambo. Okay, Sambo. There yeah. you go. There you go. Um, I can't keep up with them. They got their <laughs> call names for this dog and that dog, and I go, uh, yeah. They're they all have different. It's so much different than than what I'm used to. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next one here, we got Grand Water Champion, Grand Knight Champion Two, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Sanders Hammer Junior HGX Two, uh, male born in October of 2013, owned by Tyler Sander of Marble Hill, Missouri. Yeah, this dog is sired by Grand Champion Grand Knight, hails Iron Hammer, and is off of Hang'em High Magic Trick is the dam, uh, bred by Randy Sander. 41 Grand Champion wins for uh, this dog, uh, earned the degree in July of 2021. Getting on down our list here, we got Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Hominy Ridge Ellie May. It's a female walker born in November of 2015, owned by Philip Goodson of Meadville, Mississippi. Sire is Royal Regal Row. That's a champion dog. And the dam is a grand champion, Wild Cry Sally May, bred by Philip Goodson. 40 grand champion wins earned in March of 2022 for Hami, Omni Ridge Ellie May. 
We got Grand Champion Hall of Fame. I walked the line. A male born in July of 2015 and uh, again owned by Angela Carpenter of Silva, North Carolina. Yeah, another city dog here. The World Championship Red or the World Champion Red Eagle coming to your city is the sire. Grand Champion Stylish Star is the dam bred by Lisa Hunsiger. Uh, 43 Grand Champion wins earned in April of 2022. All righty. Next one here, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Confirmation Grand Champion, Diamond Rock's New Beginning. That's a male born in March of 2016, owned by Robert Dykes of Jasper, Tennessee. And is, again, off of a Grand Champion Champs history in the making. We just mentioned that dog has another one here. This is a second one we've mentioned today now off of Champs history in the making. The dam is Grand Champion Kentucky Mountain Mama Mia, bred by Danielle Champ. 43 Grand Champion wins, earned the degree in May of 2022. Yeah, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Cherry Creek Exotica, the female born in January of 2014, owned by Candy Johnson of Lincoln, Missouri. This dog is sired by Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion Alexander's Gold Rush, etc. The dam is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Cherry Creek Confetti, bred by Scott Houston and Amanda Alexander. 40 Grand Champion wins total, earned the degree in October of 2022 for Cherry Creek Exotica. We've got another Cherry Creek bred dog here. This is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Lost Heritage, Polaris, win in Rome. A male walker born in March of 2020, owned by Meredith and Cindy McDonald, Cole Vanover, and Kristen Lawless of Central City, Iowa. Yeah, this dog is sired by Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion, Cherry Creek, Ringside Gossip. The dam is Confirmation Champion, uh, champion Lost Heritage Cherry Creek Scarlet, bred by Cole Vanover and Andrea Carter. A 40 grand champion wins for this dog, earned the degree in November of 2022. And our last uh, tree and walker to make the Grand Champion Hall of Fame uh, title as of uh, this list being compiled back in February is Night Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Prairie Branch Ripper. It's a male born in April of 2018, owned by Brooklyn Roberts of Vossburg, Mississippi. Sired by uh, just a PR dog here, Junior's Black Moe Skeeter, and same with the dam, Creek Late Night Kate, bred by John Williamson Jr. 40 grand champion wins for this dog, earned in January of this year, 2023. Yeah, so hey, congratulations to all those tree and walkers, an impressive list there. Yeah, and some, you know, some very uh, recognizable names from uh, from the past here, you know, oh, it's yeah. good to see that, you know, uh, John, you know, uh, that first one we mentioned, you know, just did so much winning over the years, and uh and it's good to see uh, some of these dogs and their offspring make it into the Hall of Fame like this. No kidding. Yep. Four, four off of uh, coming to your city. That's yeah. impressive. Off a sure. of world champion. Wow. I'm sure Lisa Hunsaker is, uh, as a breeder, that's got to be uh, very, uh, very, uh, very, uh, that's a, a so great a accomplishment. accomplishment. Yeah, sure yeah. is. Absolutely. Well, like we talked about, uh, the, the Grand Field Champion Hall of Fame and the Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame are way smaller than the Hunt and the, and the Bench Show for sure. And right now there's only one hound that has uh, achieved our grand field champion hall of fame title. And this is a dog that we talked about a few episodes ago when we talked about the blue tick uh, bench show hall of famer. So it's a dual hall of fame dog. And this dog is confirmation grand champion, grand water champion, three grand night champion, three grand field champion, hall of fame, grand champion, hall of fame, Hogan's Ruby HTX four. Yeah, born in March of 2015, owned by Lee Hogan of Rudolph, Wisconsin. Out of Grand Knight Champion, Champion Son, Sons of Squaw Creek's Blue Hank, the dam is Grand Water Champion, Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion, Hogan's Jazz, HDX2, bred by Lee Hogan. 41 Grand Field Champion wins total. 41. Yeah. 41. Degree earned in July of 2021, but... Uh, Hey, I think it was the last episode we talked about Lee Hogan, and if there's a water racer or field trial on the night that he puts his dogs in everything, and obviously uh, they do very well at it. And here's here's Ruby, one of those. Yeah. Sometimes when I go to uh, to some of the field trials where they're actually, you know, they're super competitive, and there's a lot of entries, and you see a lot of bear hunters there and stuff, and a lot of them will clamor over, you know, hey, you should split up the males and the females. The, the females just just can't compete with the males. Uh, Lee Hogan, he says otherwise. He, yeah. he does pretty dang good in all of them, regardless <laughs> yeah. of the competition there. Yeah, congratulations to Lee. Done an outstanding job with his coon hounds for sure. Uh, we've had two hounds that have achieved the Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame titles as of uh, February 28th. 
Um, and the first one is a, a very familiar name to, especially in this area for, for water race enthusiasts, field trial enthusiasts, and just coon hunters, period. David Trumbo. That's right. Yep. Plot uh, Island. Grand Field Champion 3, Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame, Grand Champion Trumbo Sandy Hook Charlie. The male plot born in January of 2011, owned by David Trumbo of Val- Valparaiso, Indiana. He's always had good hounds in the water races and field trials ever since I've known him. I didn't really know him until I started working here, you know, and going to plot days like that. But he's always, he always has some contenders in those uh, field trials and water races. Uh, the dog is sired by Grand Field Champion, Grand Water Champion, Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion, Trumbo's Sandy Hook Smokey. Uh, the dam is Field Champion, Grand Water Champion, PR Charlie's Angel, bred by Charles Filtz, uh, 64 Grand Water Champion wins. Uh, degree earned in April of 2018. So, yeah, congratulations to Mr. Trumbo there. Uh, very deserving for sure. And the last dog we're going to highlight today is our second and last Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame dog that's achieved that title, and that's Grand Water Champion Hall of Fame Grand Champion that carries Mr. Slim Jim, the male Trian Walker, born in March of 2009, owned by Jerry and Milana Carey of Mountain View, Arkansas. This dog is sired by night champion Nippers Tree Shaking Rowdy, and the dam is night champion champion Night Heat Susie, bred by Jerry and Melina Carey. 48 Grand Water Champion wins total, earned the degree in October of 2016. Mr. Slim Jim. Well, we did it. We made it through all the Hall of Fame dogs, yeah. so that was fun, but I felt, felt like they needed their, they deserved recognition on this platform for their achievements, so glad we were able to do that over the past couple months. Um but we got some big things coming on the podcast. We've been talking about it. Of course, we got three more breed days coming up for me. I got red bone days, English days, and plot days on the horizon. Uh, we definitely, we got some rule stuff building up a little bit. We want to get out here and hash out some rules yep. for everyone because we've got a lot of feedback. Everybody are really enjoying the rule episodes. Another thing that we just recently released is Jamie Eastep has done some coon hound one-on-one, some of the night hunt basic rules and things like that you can see on YouTube. Just search some of that coon hound one-on-one. Uh, so yeah, some really good things out there right now. Yeah, we got some good media stuff out there, and uh, hey, and uh, some things we can't talk about yet. That's right. I got yeah. I got some we got some different ideas for for things to do for future podcasts and uh, future maybe YouTube uh, how to type videos of our own. So uh, stay on the lookout for that stuff. Stay stay tuned to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned to our social media platforms, and uh, we sure hope you enjoy uh, all the new content that we're putting out for you guys. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content. 